Hey everybody, so we've got a, a black concrete patio we're pouring. There's the color I just put in. Comes in those bags. U28 charcoal black. And we're going to be pouring this right over here. So I don't know, not sure why you want this concrete black, but we'll give them what they want. So I just dumped it up there in the truck. He's mixing it in really good right now. We'll see what this looks like here in a minute. How many of you out there are thinking of pouring a colored concrete patio, stamp concrete pad, walkway, entryway? What, what color are you thinking of? U28 charcoal is a really, really dark gray. It's I guess black wasn't technically the right word for it because they do make a darker one that even looks more black than this. If you look at the shirt I have on, the shirt I, I'm wearing today is black. I'm way back there in the back magging those edges. And the U28 charcoal is really a, it's, it's a really super dark gray. It actually, it does look kind of black right here when it's coming out of the truck, when it's wet like this. And then after it dries out and cures up, it, it lightens up a little bit to a really dark gray. So let me know down in the comments, are you thinking of pouring some colored concrete? When we pour colored concrete, it's most of the time it's for something stamped, you know, something we're doing whether it's ashlar slate or uh, wood plank or something like that, something stamped. We don't typically do too many just regular smooth finished colored patios like this. Um, this is going to have a roof on it, so it's probably not ever going to get wet and won't be slippery. But they just wanted a little different color than regular concrete, so that's what we're doing. There's actually a really big patio on the front of this house too, so... We're going to end up doing that one. That'll be in a whole different video. Today, me and Eric just came up here today to get this small back patio poured because they're going to stop putting the trusses on the roof of this house. And this patio is going to support some of those trusses. So they couldn't really get the crane up here and have them start putting the trusses up without this patio being done. So we already poured a, a big, big floor today. We left Luke and Darren on that floor. And then... This was actually about an hour away from the first pour we did. Me and Eric just kind of drove up here. Luckily, we could get concrete on the books, and they sent the creed out. We put the color in it, and we're pouring it out right now. It's And it's hot today. It's about 90 degrees, hot and humid. This thing's going to cure up. It's going to dry up for us really, really fast. So the key for us is just getting it down, getting it bull floated, and then, uh, you know, hopefully we have a few minutes before we got to get right back on it and start trialing it. We're going to, you're going to see in, later in the video how we finish this. We're going to just finish it by hand with hand trials. I'll get on it with some skids, so you'll see how I do that. Um, no real, I mean, you could put a power trial on this. This is actually, for us, this is way too small to be putting a power trial on. We can just finish it by hand about as easy. So we do have a power trial with us if we need it. But right now we're just getting it screeded. The good thing about setting those forms to grade is you can see I'm screeding right off top of the form. Eric's screeding off the wet pad we got out back. It does have about a half an inch of slope or so away from the building. Even though it's going to have a roof on it, they still wanted to slope it away from the building a little bit. We got, we're using a 4,000 PSI mix here with the mid-range water reducer. We've got fiber mesh in there for reinforcement. So it's a good strong concrete mix and you know once we get this once we get it in Eric and I wanted to get this in in about 10 or 15 minutes um, we'll get to uh, finishing it so we'll be right there yeah so that's quite a bit darker than what we normally pour for concrete and adding those three bags of U28 charcoal obviously that's what it's for so when that cures up, it'll cure up and it'll stay pretty dark compared to what those concrete walls, see how those walls are really, really light gray? This stuff will stay pretty dark gray. That's what they want. But you really need to put a sealer on it to get the, the right effect. I mean, when this does dry up, it's gonna look fairly light compared to what it looks like right now. And in order to get it to turn back dark like this, you gotta put a sealer on it to darken it back up. But we're gonna finish this by hand. He wants it kind of smooth he doesn't want a broom finish on this so we're gonna let it set up a little bit just mag it out trial it out a couple times and then we'll be done with this
Well, this was about 30 minutes after the pour. You know, the sun's coming around the building. It's starting to really beat out back here. It's, it's really, really warm. And we're just jumping right on it. I got my skids on. I got uh, my two mag floats. One's a big one, one's a little one. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to mag out the middle part. Eric's going to go around and reach what he can from the edge. And we're just smoothing out the surface the best we can with our mag floats. You know, getting out the bull float lines, filling in any little imperfections the bull float didn't get. It's just part of the finishing process. You know, and then we're going to jump off it and let it cure up for a few more minutes. And then we're going to get on it with hand trials here. You'll see in a second. But this is basically how we do it. We don't, we don't typically mag and hand trial on the same hit. We like it to cure up just a little bit. We don't want to seal in any moisture or anything like that. This actually has a little bit of air entrainment too because it is going to be exposed to some freezing and thawing a little bit. So, you know, we don't want to trap any air in there by, by sealing it off too early. So here we are getting on it with our hand trials. This time Eric jumped on the skids and I'm getting it from the outside edge. I'm just, I, a lot of times when I finish by hand, I like using that, that, what they call a pool trial it's rounded on both edges the sometimes when you finish with just the square edge trials like what Eric has right there you tend to leave a few more lines from the sharp corners with a pool trial with the rounded edges you don't really leave any lines from the trial and I don't know I've just always finished with one of these everybody has their preference and you know I got both but when I when I'm finishing something smooth like this by hand I'll grab that one first so we've hit it twice with the skids. I hit it once with a mag. Eric hit it once with a hand trowel. This thing's curing up really, really fast. Sometimes at the, the, the drier the surface gets, the harder the surface gets, sometimes when you use those skids, it'll start to pick up little pieces like of the surface, like dime size or even quarter sized as you're sliding those skids over the surface. So it actually kind of makes more work for you trying to fill in those little those little holes we call it the concrete the paste at the surface just sticks to the bottom of those skids as it dries up so what we'll do sometimes is we'll get in those those flat soled uh, shoe ins they're called shoe ins I'll have a link for them down in the description and we can walk right on the surface because it's still it's very very hard now but it's there's still just enough moisture left in the surface where we can smooth it out so we're getting a third a third hit on here is what we call it with a hand trowel. Well, actually, it's the second hit with a hand trowel, but third hit overall, just by using those shoe ins. And I mean, I'm not sinking in. I'm 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 barely even leaving a print with them, and we're getting this thing really really smooth. So a little bit of bending over to it, but it's not really not too bad. It's it's easier than trying to fill in all those little marks from the the skids leave. So it's pretty much done. I mean, we could leave it like this. There was that little part in the shade up there up against the building that, you know, it's just about gone now the way the sun's moving. And we're going to just hit those few little spots that were left to smooth this out. And then the hand trowel and part of this will be done. Then I'm going to show you real quick just how I saw cut this. I, I did saw cut a little bit of a pattern into it. Once this all cures out, you, you put, you're not really going to be able to, to see those hand trial marks. Now here I am, I, I came back the next day to, to saw cut it. I'm using, a, that's called a soft cut saw, that's the electric one. That's actually a pretty old one. I've got two of these, and I've got a gas powered walk behind one. Most of the decorative stuff we use, we use these smaller ones on. That'll go down about an inch, inch and a quarter with a brand new blade. And it'll control, you know, any any shrinkage, cracks, contraction joints, whatever you want to call them. But it does a pretty good job of controlling the cracks in the concrete. This, we could use this saw on the same day if we want. Just typically on a on a decorative floor, if you cut the same day, the lines don't look quite as sharp as they do if you come back and cut them the next day. The next day they look like really, really clean, sharp cut lines. That Overall, that took me about 20 minutes or so to cut, I'd say. And I'm just getting off most of the dust. 
The homeowner will end up putting some sealer on this. They'll let it cure out for about 30 days. They'll get the trusses up, get the roof on, let it cure up really good, let it dry out, and then they'll put some sealer on this, and that'll be the finished look. I'll try to get a finished look after they get it all done. And that's the pattern I cut in it. He just wanted it cut into some blocks like that. I thought it looked pretty cool. They did too, so everybody's happy. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you on the next one.